Okay, so we got the Miraculous World Paris Tales of Shadybug and Claw Noir special, and I recently made a video before it released that was pretty much just a hype fest, talking about how it was going to be awesome, that it was going to slap, be one of the best pieces of Miraculous media to date. And then it came out, and what do you know, it actually delivered on the hype. My god, this thing was good. Like seriously, so good. This is some peak miraculous right here. Can't believe how good it was, I'm actually in shock. Yeah, I made the hype video, and I expected it to be alright, but this was next level. And it's really a bit of a shame to me that they have to keep this quality confined to specials and films, because in those formats, the recent movie, the three world specials, the story, the characters, the action, it's all cooking. That's the stuff we need every single episode in the regular series. Imagine this level of quality slotted into two episodes of season five right after the intro episodes. Hell yeah, the hype would have been high. And so, this is kind of making me a bit hopeful for season six. Come on, writers. Show me that you can put out this level of content every single week. That's what it's going to take to get the franchise to the next level. But yeah, let's just get started, shall we, and work our way through the episode like we would for a regular episode. So strap yourselves in, folks. And so we begin. Okay, so when I heard that Gabe was going to feature in the episode as a hero, I was pumped. But I honestly didn't expect them to push that concept so hard. Because right out of the gate, they blast us with a Gabe-centric intro theme where he does the classic narration, but describing himself. And yes, oh my god, a thousand times yes, pure yes. He does the song, the song, it's so good, it's so funny. Gabe's singing voice, actually decent. And I watched the English dub just so everybody's on the same page. And then on top of that, I really like the cool art style they used for the intro as well. And so from the get-go, it just gets you super hyped and excited for the special, and it made me laugh too. So a great way to kick things off, because it puts the audience in a good mood coming in. And I also liked how they handled his character, really. They kept a pretty similar backstory, but there's slight differences that have sent him down a different pathway. Also, I love seeing him cuddle with Nuru in the intro. Seriously, I needed more of that. Main universe Nuru never gets any affection, so this would have been nice to see. And then we get into the show properly. We've got Gabe, Alia, Robo, Max. Hmm. So what do we reckon here? Is Max a robot in this world that was built by a Russian guy called Markov? Or is Max dead and his mind was uploaded into the robot? Or did Max just for some reason program the robot to have his personality and voice? These are the deep questions, the questions I need answered. Anyway, Gabe and Alia, who are both looking pretty fabulous, I gotta say, especially Gabe. Dude's looking iconic right here. <laughs> Such a glow up compared to main universe Gabe. Ugh. And Alia's design's really cool as well. And so they've somehow, in a way that's not ever really explained, have managed to get a TV signal from a parallel universe, which, well, that's certainly something. Like, how? But anyway, they figure out they can make a jump to a different universe, and so Betterfly, which, let's be honest, is not the best name of all time, powers up Alia into a multiverse warp gate. While at the same time, Nino charges in to warn them that our villains, Shadybug and Claw Noir, are on their way. And before we go any further, I gotta wonder, because it's never addressed. The episode frames things as Claw not knowing that his dad is Betterfly, and vice versa. But isn't the underground lair underneath Adrian's mansion? And him and Shadybug are entering through the glass elevator thing, so that leads in from the mansion itself in canon. So is he just an idiot? Did I miss a line of dialogue? Like, what's going on here? Also, Alia's hero form? Like her empowered form. Looks pretty cool. Love the costume. It's very Tron. Although that's a bit of a dated reference. Betterfly then flees through the portal. And we cut away to the main timeline. And who do we see? Why, it's regular Gabe. Oh, evil monarch Gabe. And not the best version, but the lame version. Before he made the rings and he had the weird disco alien costume. And I'll be real. If I had one complaint besides how cringe emo Adrian and Claw Noir look. It's that they didn't have the special push for the timeline or the story at all. They kept it within the Gabe saga. They're just filling in some blanks. and uh, They ended up doing really well with the story in the end, but at the same time, it just feels like they took the safe and easy way out. Would have been cool to see how things had changed. Oh well. Anyway, we see the aftermath of when Cat Noir accidentally hit Monarch with the Cataclysm, which was cool, especially since we see Adrian sad and sulky in his room, unsure of what to do, questioning whether he's still in control of his powers. In the show itself... It very much felt like they didn't even delve into that plotline too heavily, so it was cool to see them do so here. Finally, some actual plot consequences. Although I gotta say, Plague's advice was pretty shit across the board. This dude's a billion years old. 
billions of years old if you believe Tiki. How is he still so bad at advice? We then have a couple of quick scenes. First, Marinette and Alia, where Alia continues to be the best friend in the world to Marinette, building her up and telling her how great she is. And I gotta say, throughout this episode, was anybody else low-key vibe in this? Like, I had to keep reminding myself they're not the show's couple. They're not even a ship at all here. Like, not even close. They'll never be canon. But this, and then especially the last scene where they're laying on Marinette's sofa thing talking and getting real close, I was like, okay, feeling some chemistry here. And like, not the friend kind, you dig? Wasn't even really the scripting either, although maybe that was a little bit of it. But the voices and the animation, damn, animation department running wild tonight. But moving on, we then have a throwaway scene with Tom and Sabine where Tom hears Tiki stealing food. Although I gotta say, Tom, won't they go stale out on the table overnight? No glad rap, no nothing. Put them suckers in a Tupperware, Tom. You're a baker for God's sake. Also, lol at the news report, only focusing on Ladybug, and then the crowd only chanting for Ladybug. Even in the canon of the show, the people consider Cat Noir a sidekick. <laughs> Ooh. It's like when Gabe swore a blood feud on Ladybug exclusively and just forgot Cat Noir existed. I think that actually happens again later this episode. Dank. And then we're back to Alia and Marinette. Marinette's in her self-doubt mode after losing the Miraculous of the Monarch, with Alia trying to comfort her until... Whammy, she turns into the superhero version, and out comes Betterfly with a very, very dramatic entrance. Even had a little bit of slow-mo there. He tries to get Marinette to lead him to Ladybug and Cat Noir before Alia's portal opens again, with her warning them that the villains are coming through. Okay, so we see that Gabe can deactivate the power-ups later on. He just goes... And it goes. So why not do it when you see that they're about to come through? When she tells you that, just close the portal. I figured that his original plan was literally just to bring Ladybug and Cat Noir back with him to fight, right? So surely bringing these two villains to the good universe was not the plan. So why let them come through? Dude, epic fail. Instead, he gathers up Marinette and escapes into the night, leaving Alia to her fate, whilst the villains come through, having just murdered Robomax. Oh... Rest in peace, Robomax. We hardly knew ya. And I gotta say, just in general, top tier voice performances here from the leads, as in the contrast between the good and the bad version of both our main heroes, and also Gabe. Just great. They legit felt like different characters. Also, I really love the reversed interplay between them. Instead of kind-hearted teasing, verging on flirting like normal, it's just cruelty. Endless cruelty. That's legit good writing. I'm very impressed, Asterix. Congratulations. Claude Noir then blows a hole in the wall, and the pair leave. And I mean, that was a full-on explosion. Rubble would have landed in the street. The fact that the parents do not go and check on the girls properly and instead just talk through the trap door is ridiculous. Dare I even say, utterly ridiculous. Also, didn't they tie Alia up, like straight up, like around her arms, pinning them? How did she escape so easily? That's stupid. The pair then pursue Betterfly and Marinette using a lucky charm, which I guess Shadybug is able to choose her lucky charm form. Like, she makes binoculars that lock onto butterfly pheromones and instantly knows what it is. Definitely feels a bit more precise than normal Ladybug lucky charms, where normal Ladybug needs to figure out what the object's actually used for. And in some cases, what the object even does in the first place. So the villains track them, they destroy the Eiffel Tower because of course, can't be a miraculous episode without destroying the Eiffel Tower. And then it turns out that Claw Noir can seemingly use Cat Blanc type abilities, making a huge destruction ball. Hmm. Do you reckon these type of moves are on the agenda for normal Adrian someday? A man can dream, I suppose. Then, as Betterfly fights the villains, Marinette answers her phone to talk to Alia, and in this conversation, Tika reveals that she is living in every single alternate timeline simultaneously, as in, they all have a linked consciousness, all the different Tikis, so she knows everything that's going on. So she's Tiki, but the Kwame inside Shadybug's earrings is also Tiki, who is the same linked mind. So, from a certain point of view, I guess Nuru doesn't even have it that bad, right? Because regular bad Gabe, he's a mean man, but the villains from the alternate world seem even worse. And those Kwamis seem to have it really bad. And on top of that, he's the Kwami that gets to live with Gabe and be free in the bad timeline. So suddenly my perspective has shifted on things. Nuru, you've got it easy, mate. Stop crying. We then also get a pretty interesting explanation as to why adults can spam their powers and why the villains can too, whilst our heroes have to use a time limit. 
because when you're younger, the powers take much more of a toll on your body, and so there's a built-in safety mechanism. Adults don't need this as much, although we see with Gabe that it does still take its toll from time to time, like when he used too many, or once his body was weakened by the cataclysm, and thus overusing his powers would make it worse and kill him faster. And so really, I felt like this was a very clever way to tie up what was a pretty plot-convenient loose end. Although, I will still say, them randomly learning this power in the finale at the perfect moment is still very lame and very plot armory. We also then get a bit of background lore during the battle about the state of their world, which seems to be ruled by the evil Supreme who controls the Miraculouses as well, and who Gabe stole the butterfly from in the first place. So the Supreme is probably Master Fu, right? A Master Fu who went crazy after the whole feast fiasco and pursued world domination maybe? I think that would be a really clever and unique way of going about that story if they ever return to it. Evil foo is money, I promise you. Anyway, then Ladybug joins the fight, and I gotta say the action here, just in general, is a lot better than usual. Honestly, the action in the show lately has gotten so much better in general, but here, I think they thought about it even more. They were more clever about some of the things the characters did. And the only time I really shook my head was when Ladybug and Betterfly got pressed against the wall by a car and were struggling to get it off them. Like, come on, we know you're strong enough. Stop playing. We just saw Shadybug dropkick that thing from midair into you. And there's two of you. Also, Claude Noir's nunchucks? Hell yeah. God damn it. The dude's so cool. If only his hair was different, it'd be perfect. So yeah, just great action all around. Great visuals all around. It's all popping off right now. And then Cat Noir joins in and we get the call back to him accidentally cataclysming Monarch with his battle with Claw Noir. And I also like to see how bewildered he was talking to Betterfly. Wholesome, supportive dad interactions. I love it. Even if they don't realize. And they're from different universes too. But anyway, Claw Noir tanks a cataclysm because he's an absolute badass. And then he whoops Cat Noir, as is tradition. Also, Shadybug just casually pulling out a rocket launcher. <laughs> And on top of that, she can decreate the Lucky Charms and shift it into something more useful for her? Hell yeah! I feel like Season 6 and Beyond is going to get bonkers for the action. Because honestly, this feels like a bit of a testing ground to see how people react to some of the power changes. So I expect our prime heroes, they're definitely going to be picking up some of these powers at some point. Also, that slow-mo sequence where Cat Noir is about to get vaporized by Shady Bug, and then Betterfly saves him with the power-up, turning him into the flying angel cat, that was so hype. And then they escape, Shadybug falls out of the sky, she crash lands and then Claw tries to steal her Miraculous. And fails of course, because Adrian is still Adrian, no matter the universe. He's never going to get one over on Marinette. <laughs> also, I love how the scene transitions are custom to show the different villains and the different heroes. It's a small thing, but it just enhances everything too. Whilst our heroes hide in the sewers, how typical, Evil Gabe decides now is the time to get involved in the episode, trying to akumatize the villains, and failing because they see it coming and think it's Betterfly trying to take control of them. So I guess he can force people to work for him like Monarch can. Otherwise, why would they be nervous? The villains then return to Marinette's room and try to figure out where Alia went, and our heroes have a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart in the sewers. Perfect time for it. I wonder how it smells down there. Betterfly talks about hope and belief and all that, and honestly, he does talk about this quite a lot. And then we learn a little bit about his world, which is quite interesting. Basically, he lost Emily, he wanted her back, the Supreme gave him a Miraculous, and then when he realized how bad everything was, he betrayed the Supreme, stole the butterfly, and I guess the peacock, and went into hiding. At least, that's how I understood things went. But does that mean the Supreme knows who he is, or did he steal them afterwards? Did he get... It's very confusing, but regardless, I want to know more. Also, I'm guessing that Emily's just perma-dead in that universe. But yeah, back on topic, if the Supreme knows who Gabe is, or has an idea of who he might be, in a way it makes giving Adrian a Miraculous and having him hunt down his own father and try to kill him all the more twisted. We've never seen the Supreme, and yet, suddenly, he's being built up as such a cool and interesting and dark villain. I will weep salty tears if they never touch on it again. Seriously, the way they leave the special at the end, it feels tailor-made for, ugh, I don't know, I think this is a dated reference, but in Dragon Ball Z, there was an alternate universe, an alternate timeline sort of deal. And the characters would cross over from time to time. And basically it was like an apocalypse scenario where everything that went wrong did go wrong. And they had a special that straight up showed the history of that world and how it was different to the prime world and why. It was called The History of Trunks and it was an all-time classic. I need a spin-off like that especially if they maintain this quality. Time will tell though. Shadybug then finds Ladybug's diary and reads through it, learning that Marinette is also Ladybug in this world and cringing along the way. <laughs> She's one of us. 
And also she starts to walk down the beginnings of her path to redemption, walking down the pathway of changing her mind as she sees how much better Marinette's life is compared to hers. Then it's back to the sewers for a big old fashioned inspirational speech from Betterfly, which I honestly liked. It was a little bit cheesy, but by God it was nice to see somebody imparting some parental wisdom to these kids. They need it. Adrian has the original Gabe who sucks, and Natalie, who let's be real, she kind of sucks, and Gorilla doesn't speak. Marinette has her parents, and I love them, but they seem very negligent. Moving on, we're back to Shadybug, who's reading through Marinette's diary still and starting to cry. And yeah, at this point I knew, redemption arc. And I thought it was really clever how they got it to learn the information about the Miraculouses from the diary. Although, why is Marinette writing such sensitive information in a diary to begin with? Even if it's in a lockbox, I feel like that information is far too spicy to have any written records of. Especially after you've just lost all the Miraculouses through carelessness. <laughs> Come on, Marinette. Developing a bit of an aggressed smooth brain from exposure to Adrian, I see. And so now, Shadybug knows that if she takes the Cat Miraculous away from Claw Noir, she can get her wish and fix her life. And so she whoops his ass, and like, she doesn't even break a sweat doing so. She just takes him out, and she handcuffs him in the blink of an eye. Once again, doesn't matter what dimension your ass is from. If your name is Adrian Aggressed, you gon' get whooped, son! And so she takes the Miraculous and realizes, oh shit, that's Adrian Aggressed. And yeah, his emo look, it ain't much better than his hero form. It really just makes you appreciate the original Cat Noir and Adrian design choices. A classic design, and most importantly, non-stupid hair. It's then revealed that it's Adrian who has a crush on Marinette in this world, which I found to be a fun reversal of fortune. And of course, in another massive Al moment for Adrian, even though in the original timeline, the original world, Adrian and Marinette have mutual crushes on one another in a complicated web of alter egos, it seems that this Marinette just hates Adrian and hates Claw Noir. <laughs> Poor dude. And then we have Marinette try to use the wishes, only to fail as the Supreme has somehow blocked it. And here we get to see how much damage the two have done to their bodies through overuse of the miraculous powers. Those black veins. Ugh, looks like they got a cataclysm inside their body. Damn. Okay, so with all these hanging plot threads, there is surely no way that we don't go back to this alternate universe, either in another special, a spin-off, oh god, I'd love a spin-off, or hell, even just the main show in general at some point during season six or beyond. Surely they're not going to set up a villain as mysterious and dastardly as this and just never use it again. There's so much potential here, it's unreal. I'm honestly in awe at the quality on display here. Where was this for five seasons? Then, in the midst of a little comedy scene with Alia trying to steal Sabine's phone, we also get a little bit more world building, a little bit of a look into the past of evil Marinette. When Sabine hears a loud crash from when Marinette was blasted away by the Wish's rejection, she tries to speak to her through the trap door, and in return, Marinette responds with yelling and with venom, only to notice that Sabine's actually treating her kindly, saying it's okay that she broke something and they can fix it together. So clearly, her mum is not sweet, and not kind in her original world. Damn, that makes me feel sad. So basically this character is Marinette if she had no support system whatsoever. She's got a bad home life, a bad school life, and boom, she's converted to the villain side. I said in my hype video for this, that this was their only chance to make a compelling villain Marinette story because they'll never pull the trigger in the main show. And my God, they have over-delivered. This is just so good. Then she gives back Claw's Miraculous and she cries. And damn, this actually got me a tiny little bit. Like most of the time with Miraculous, the sad moments, they tend to fall flat for me. Because the writing's a little bit cringy, I end up having a bit of a smirk. And on top of that, they usually rush through things. They don't let them simmer. They don't let them develop. But this scene, it lasted a while. It lingered on. She reads the diary. And you intercut that with different sequences, and it makes it more spread out. Ah, oh, just perfect pacing. Perfect everything. Perfect dialogue. Top acting. Top animation. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I'm being a fanboy here, and I'm not ashamed. But my god, those veins, those veins are looking bad. Even worse than his. Better see a doctor. Monarch then arrives, they try to beat his ass, they fail, cause Ox Miraculous, and Gabe, who's acting especially zesty today. Like, what are these poses? Anyway, Gabe offers to join up, and he tells them his plan, whilst Alia secretly films them from the trapdoor, so the heroes can easily overcome them. 
Well, maybe not easily, but avoid their trap at least. And yeah, that's pretty much what happens. They're able to come up with a cool plan of their own. Although I do think it's a bit of a shame that Monarch and Betterfly never actually meet or go head to head at all. That would have been fun. Especially since, well, I think Betterfly is probably a bit smart. I think he could probably guess that Monarch is him, but from a different timeline. And so that would have been a cool clash. And the conversation between them as they fight would have complemented the other two very nicely. Where Adrian and Marinette are able to talk their alternates down, Gabe can't. And I think that would really cap off the story quite nicely. I mean, the whole sequence was good as is, but I just think this would have added to it. Anyway, before all this actually goes down though, we have more Ladybug self-doubt, which is actually soothed for once by Cat Noir, who gives her a pep talk and reminds her that she has plot armor and her plans never fail. And honestly, nice, Cat Noir doing something useful and relevant for a change. You really can tell this is a special episode. And so both sides spring their traps. First the villains where they do the giant illusion and ambush them, followed by the heroes who have Gabe's protection, which saves them from being paralyzed by Gabe. Ugh. Anyway, we then have two top tier battles between the doppelgangers. And seriously, the action here was great. Really intense, fast paced, violent. Loved it. And the heroes both score the victory, not by actually winning the fight because they both technically lose, but by talking the other down, showing them that they're the same person, that they can fight to achieve the same happiness in their own worlds. Although I will say, Dark Marinette's life especially seems like a massive bummer. No friends, nasty mother, all eat horrifically apparently. Whew. <laughs> I did laugh that Thomas could not resist shitting on Chloe even now. And hey, this is one for the record books. Cat Noir actually picks up a win by himself. Granted, it was against himself, but hey, it still counts. We also learn that Adrian in the other world went down a similar path to Gabe, that he just wants his mum back and he thought that this would give him the power to do so. Plus, we also got a bit of depth from normal Adrian as well when he empathizes with him and tells him that he's often thought about wishing for his mum back with the Miraculouses, but since it would take somebody else's mother away, it would be selfish and he couldn't do it. Really great development, really great scenes. And like I said, I think if we had an extra one with the two Gabes fighting and talking, it would have sealed the deal for me as being a top tier finish. Oh, the juxtaposition. Two youngsters set on the right path versus Gabe who's already too far gone to turn back. That would have been a really bittersweet finale. Anyway, we get the happy music. Shadybug can use the reverse power, which, okay. Remember in the New York special when Ladybug had a sook because she couldn't reverse things without an Akuma and a muck? So I guess that was all just a bunch of bullshit then. She could have always reversed things. Just make a lucky charm, throw it into the sky. It fixes anything. And on top of that, it healed their disease? Like what? They're black veins. Why'd it heal them? And I mean, since they were wearing makeup the whole time, it's clear that they'd never actually been able to fix this before. And on top of that, I doubt that she'd ever actually use the power of Miraculous Shady Bug. Why bother fixing shit when you're the villain, right? But then this begs the question, if it reverses Claw Noir's self-damage too, not just Shady Bug's self-damage, why doesn't all the times that Ladybug uses Miraculous Ladybug reverse Gabe's Cataclysm Wound? It just feels like a bit of a plot hole, doesn't it? Anyway, Shadybug's subconscious changes her costume to resemble Ladybugs, and it's all happy ending. They prepare to head home as a new team, Claw Noir changes his hair color, adds a cute little bell to his costume, and then Gabe, as in main Gabe, pulls a massive smooth brain move. He could have ended it here. He could have defeated them once and for all. He could have won instantly and stolen the Miraculouses from some random pair with a sneak attack. But for some reason, he doesn't wait for the extra heroes to leave his world. He just does it instantly. Dude. He's either an idiot or the unluckiest man in the world. Because then Ladybug powers up with Betterfly's help into a brand new design and bleeds across the multiverse to beat his ass in every single reality he arrives in. Saving Scarabella and Kitty Noir. Saving the anime world. And my god, that design in general just looks fire. I love the anime world. Oh, looks cool. She then whoops him in the comic world and the opposite hero's world. Just everywhere she can. I assume there was more off screen. Although I gotta say, I wonder why she doesn't just follow him through the portal. Figure out where he lives. <laughs> I mean, the portal itself usually stays open for a couple of seconds and he holds it open whilst he's in the alternate world. She's already whooping him. Tackle him through it. See where he lives. So yeah, he gets embarrassed, as he should, because the dude's cringe, and he swears revenge on every single ladybug in the multiverse. And I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, mate, we've seen the season five finale. That ain't happening. Why'd you write that in the script? A pointless teaser's gonna go nowhere because he's dead, and surely they're not gonna milk his arc again, are they? Surely not. Man, it's actually just sunk in. This could be the last we see of Evil Gabe. Damn. 
end of an era. But yeah, they go back home, and now we need the spin-off, please. And then we finish off with, let's be honest, a pretty fan y ending with Alia and Marinette. Like, yeah, friends can be close, but the shit they're saying, at least in the English dub, like, do you remember what you said to me on the first day of school when we first met? That shit's straight out of every romance anime you've ever seen, man. And you can't tell me they weren't baiting a little bit here. Look at them, staring into each other's eyes. Oh. Marinette. This pose? This pose looks like it's about to make out. Like, come on now. They've always been close and intimate as friends, but this is a different vibe altogether. <laughs> anyway, moving on, they go downstairs very tired because, you know, they've been up all night fighting villains. Hope it's not a school night. And so we finish there. The episode slapped. Slapped hard. This could be the GOAT miraculous TV episode of all time. Asterisk with some late game redemption. Let's see if they can keep it up for next season. Ah, but we've been talking for ages now. My voice hurts and I'm tired. So it's time to end things here. So with all that being said, these have been my opinions. And now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the special? Did you like it? Did you hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Especially comment. Let's get some discussion going. Let me know. 